Okay, so this is example one, 7.3. We are going to be um, putting this data, as I mentioned, into our graphing calculators, and we're going to be solving for lines of regression. Well, not a line. Uh, we're going to be solving for an exponential uh, curve of regression. Okay. So, if you want to get your calculator out, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process again of putting this into the calculator and plotting the points first. So if you recall, you need to go to stat, enter, and you should remember this. Let's use list one and two, or you can use whatever list you have available there, but I'm going to clear number one and clear number two so that we can reuse those. And just highlight the list name and just hit clear. Okay, so with, with example number one here, we have to decide um, we have to decide what we're going to use for X and Y, right? So let's just read the question here. It says, the population of Canada from 1871 to 1971 is shown in the table below. In the third column, the values have been rounded. And there's a couple pictures, too, that are kind of interesting. Um, uh, Main Street in Winnipeg in 1880 and then in 2010. Um, so just a couple pictures. And uh, obviously, population and lots of things have changed over 100 years. So it says, using graphing technology, create a graphical model and an algebraic exponential model for the, da the data. So we're going to want to plot the points and draw the graph and, and just kind of a rough sketch of the graph. And then we're going to want to figure out an exact um, function that would pass through those points, similar to what we've been doing. Okay. So what are we going to do here? We've got three columns. So how are we going to approach this? Any ideas of how we might approach this? Okay, could you do two different graphs? Okay, um, I guess we could do two different graphs. The question is, um, what, so what is the question? What are the questions uh, in this problem? Uh, what are they asking for? And it says, uh, assuming the population growth continued at the same rate, estimate the population in 2011. So we're going to have to do some um, extrapolation there. And it says, round your, your answer to the nearest million. Okay. So probably what we could do, guys, is we could probably, instead of doing two graphs, because look at this is an exact number, and this is rounded to the nearest million. So we could probably just use one of these. And I, I suppose if the answer just wants us to round to the nearest million, I suppose we could um, just use these numbers to put into the calculator. It might be a little easier. So the other question is, what do we do with the year? Do you want to put in the years just as they stand? Do you want to do something else? Because we do have some options. We could put in the years just as they stand right there. That's no problem. We could set 1871 to zero as well if we don't want our, you know, our um, scales to be really whacked out there. But it doesn't really matter. You could set this year to zero, and then this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? Um, we could do that all the way up to 100. Or you could just plug these in just as they are. It's no big deal. So what do you want to do? Plug the years in or just do 0, 10, 20, that sort of thing? The years in? Okay, let's, let's try that. I think that should work fine. So let's do that. 1871. So just go ahead and, and put uh, the year in for your X. Okay. And then plug the number in and then hit Enter. And we'll go to the next one. So once you've got the years in the second row, we're just going to go with the rounded um, numbers there. So we're going to round it to 2.44 million is going to be your first one, right? So once you've got that in, double check. You want to make sure you have the same number of items in both lists. So here we have uh, 11 items, it should be. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is good both lists and you've double checked that. Okay, so do anybody, does anybody remember what we do next? We've got to plot these points. Okay, we can go to the window, yeah. Um, usually we go to the stat plots next and then the window right before we hit graph. So why don't we do the stat plots, okay. You got to make sure that you have your stat plots on. That's a start, yeah. So highlight uh, the on, click enter. And then this should be on the, the dots, right? The scatter plot here. You don't want these any of these other ones for now. 
You want to make sure you have the proper lists. So list one was our x, yes. Um, this is the independent variable, right? Time keeps marching on, and in these years we would measure the population. So independent is list one, and the dependent is list two. All right. So now we go to the window, like you mentioned. And this window that I have here for some whatever other example I was doing, that's not going to work, right? Because the X is, look at, start at 1871. So you're going to want to go to 18, you know, I don't know, 61 maybe or something. Like just before that, so you can see all the points on the screen. And then you're going to go X max is going to be, well, if we look down here, look at 2011. See, we have, to, we have a question about 2011. So I'm tempted right now to put in, you know, 2021. I'm tempted to do that just right now because I know I'm going to have to do that later for the question. Okay, so the Y, now the Y, remember we use these as decimals. So you could probably go from zero if you want. That's pretty close to zero. We could go from zero to, now we're going to have to go quite a bit more than this because we're extending to 2011. So let's go to 30 and see if that's going to work. Uh, whoops. So zero, enter, and then 30. Okay. So something like that. Let, let's see what happens there when you hit graph. Oh, awesome. Okay. So you should get something like that if you had the same window settings uh, as I did. You might have something looks like this. Yeah, most of you do. Okay. All right. So you can you can see um, this is not a straight line that doesn't you know make a real good straight line it definitely is sort of seeming to increase exponentially so it does make sense that this is a bit of an exponential type curve okay and we've left ourselves some room here to see where it's going to grow to okay so that's what the sketch looks like and you would just sketch that in your in your notes just make sure the points kind of you know go up uh, similar to this, try and just do your best there. You don't have to label it, you know, take 10 minutes to label everything, just perfect. But just a little sketch like that so we can see what's going on with some important points maybe on the axis, that's about it. So now we got to calculate, okay, so is it under math, is it under stat, is it calculate, which one do I do here? How do I get the regression function? Because now we're going to ask the calculator to find out what's the curve of best fit here. Anyone remember which one I hit next? Is it math, stat, or calculate? It is stat. Stat, and then over to the right to calculate. That's where you have all your regression models. Okay. Now we've got line reg, so that's linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic. You keep going down here, and ln is logarithmic. We're going to be uh, looking at that soon. Here, look at this. EXP reg, that's exponential regression. So this is the one we want, okay? This is the one we want. So you hit that, and then of course, just like we uh, did before, you wanna tell the calculator which lists to draw from, right? So list one, comma, list two, and then you wanna tell the calculator now, comma again, VARS, over to Y VARS, and yes, you're gonna put the function into Y1. Okay, so this is what we've been doing to uh, let the calculator determine our uh, curve of best fit and to put it into the Y equals for us. So now you have to hit enter. Okay, don't forget to hit enter because the calculator's got to do its work. So this is the format Y equals A times B to the power of X. Okay, so that's great. This is the A, it's pretty much 9, and this is the B, it's pretty much exactly 1. So it'd be y equals 9 times 1 point. Now we can't have just 1, so it's got to be a little bit more than 1, right? 9, um, and then it's bracket 1.0217 to the power of x. So that should be in our y equals already. Great. I'm going to take off the other one. And then let's graph it and see what happens. Okay. There we go. Okay. So that's, that's your line of uh, curve of best fit there, using an exponential regression. Okay? Everybody good with that? Okay. So that's uh, A. That's A. 
B says, assuming the population growth continued at the same rate uh, to 2011, estimate the population in 2011. Okay, so what we could do, because 2011 is on the x-axis, we could just go second function calculate and then just type in a value, right? And then just go 2011, because we just did the years. And what happens there? Okay, so it shows you, I don't think it actually will show you on the screen because it looks like it's a little bit out of the screen, but it does give you a number, 54.154287. Everybody see that? You get that number? So if it says round to the nearest million, this would be approximately 54 million for B. Okay? All right, so in order to see that on the screen, you'd have to extend your Y. Okay. Okay, so here's my question. This is not in here, but this is a question that you're going to have to do, so I'm going to ask this of you right now. As a C, okay, here's question C, all right? Uh, and it's frozen. I was going to type it out, but maybe not. Oh, there we go. Okay. So question C says this. Um, when was the population um, 13 million. So, in this question, when was the population 13 million? Well, you can look at the data right here and you can say, well, probably somewhere between these two numbers is 13, so probably somewhere between 41 and 51. Does that make sense? Now, how would you find that out exactly on your calculator? This is, the, this is the question. So you're given a Y value and you're looking for an X. You can't just type in a Y value like you can just type in an X value. Instead, what you have to do is you have to go like this. You have to go Y equals. And then in, an, in a second function, you have to kind of show that horizontal line for the Y value that you're looking for. So I'm going to put in just y equals 13, and then you're going to hit graph and look at what happens. So here's the y equals 13. Now, if we were to zoom in here, you would see that it would intersect this line right about here. And this x value would be the exact time, or we could calculate really to the exact year, and the exact month even, you know, when the population was supposedly 13 million. So that's step one. Step two then would be, and I don't know if I've shown you this before, but if you go to the calculate menu, so second function trace, have I shown you, we've done intersection before, right? Yeah, okay, good. So we're going to find the intersection between um, those two curves. So we're going to go to five, so second function trace, calculate menu number five, and it'll ask you uh, first curve, it'll show it up there, yes, we want that exponential curve. Second curve, that y equals 13, yep. Guess uh, an intersection point, please. Hit enter again. And then look at, so when y equals 13, x equals 1944.6398. So this tells us that, according to our model, the population would have hit 13 million in 1944. And actually 0.6 of a year Right? That's a little over half a year, so that would be late, late summer of 1944 is when the population hit 13 million, according to our model. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So if you're given an X value, you can just type it in and hit enter, and it'll show you the Y value. But if you're given a Y value, you have to do it this way. Okay, any other questions related to this example? Because that's pretty much 7.3 in a nutshell right there. If you can do all that, you're good to go.